the eggs are initially two millimeters long by one millimeter wide and grow to a length of almost three millimeters before hatching. During the early stages of development, the yolk takes up the greater part of the egg. The eyes, arms, circulatory and digestive organs are some of the morphological features that can be clearly distinguished at the end of several weeks. The duration of the embryonic period from the first cell divisions to hatching is closely related to temperature. At 25 degrees centigrade it lasts less than a month, while at 13 degrees it takes up to four months. In these last stages of development, the chromatophores can be seen dorsally as well as ventrally. They respond to external stimuli, changing both in size and colour. In hatching, the apical end of the chorion, or external covering of the egg, is dissolved by enzymes which have been segregated by the embryo. In early life stages, the paralarvae grow exponentially. Newly hatched, they measure about three millimeters in length and weigh a bit more than a milligram. Newborn octopus paralarvae are quite active. Under cultivation conditions, the hatching rates obtained are very high. In contrast to other cephalopods, such as the cuttlefish, octopus paralarvae live their first weeks forming part of the zooplankton. Their locomotion is based on a propulsion system generated by contractions of the mantle and the consequent expulsion of water through the siphon. Soon, they become active predators of other plankton organisms, such as small crustaceans. The paralarvae now exhibit a morphology similar to that of the adult, although the arms are proportionally shorter than they will be in the adult stage. Behind the eyes, the statoliths can be observed. These are small, hard structures which are used to determine the age. The paralarvae display eight arms that initially have three suckers each. Under laboratory conditions, we have noted that paralarvae can live up to a week without feeding receiving nourishment from their own reserves. Another feature at this point is the possession of an ink sac. The ink is expelled as a system of defence when they find themselves in extreme situations. To feed the paralarvae, we have used artemia, as well as various wild planktonic crustaceans. In the mouth, the radula and two mandibular pieces in the form of a beak can be seen. Now, at a very early age, they're capable of attacking prey of their same size, or even larger. In the experiment, they were observed to select prey of 2 to 5 millimetres. After the initial attack, 
executed by means of rapid frontal displacement, the prey is immobilized with the aid of the arms. Then, the outer shell is pierced and the radula introduced into the interior. The saliva they inject contains paralyzing toxins and digestive enzymes, which dissolve the soft tissues. By means of a process of continuous peristaltic suction, the tissues of the prey are transported through the digestive apparatus to the crop. At the end, the prey are left completely empty, with only the skeletal structure remaining. At birth, the paralarvae have between 65 and 80 chromatophores. In the adult stage, they display millions. Under normal conditions, they are small in size and dark in colour. When the paralarvae are confronted with a stressful situation or the attack of a prey, however, the chromatophores dilate considerably and acquire a reddish tone. At 30 days, the paralarvae continue to have habits of pelagic life. Their tentacles grow, the number of suckers increases, and the arms grow longer in proportion to the mantle. At two months of age, the animals take to the bottom of the sea, when the size of their arms has reached half of their total body length. At this point, each arm has already got more than 20 suckers. In their new habitat, the octopus juveniles begin to feed on small crustaceans and mollusks. In time, they move to deeper seas and finally reach the adult stage. Octopus juveniles exhibit a very high growth rate in captivity, half a kilo to one kilo a month. A commercial size can be reached in four months. They spawn in captivity, producing eggs with high hatching rates and parva larvae of very good quality. In the larval cultivation stage, very high mortality rates are registered. The best results were obtained using artemia. In future, to improve larvae survival, it will be necessary to continue trials with new prey and also to improve nutritional value of the artemia.